Today on Earth Focus, physicist and environmental scientist Amory Lovins on shaping a new energy future. Coming up on Earth Focus. I think one of the major drivers of our transition to efficiency and renewable uh, will be the grave threat to national security that comes not just from our oil dependence but from the brittleness, the fragility of our electric power grid. Uh, there's been a lot in the papers lately about cyber or physical attack that could take down the grid even on a national scale. That's perfectly true. The problem is still grave and just bad space weather we've now learned. Uh, solar storms can do the same thing or other natural disasters. And this is because of the over-centralization of the grid and the way failures can cascade through it. It turns out that we need to replace practically our whole electricity system over the next 40 years because it's aging, obsolete, dirty, inefficient, insecure. And we could replace it with more of what we've got, or with new nuclear plants and so-called clean coal, or with centralized renewables, or with more distributed renewables. It turns out all these options cost about the same, but they differ profoundly in risks of about eight kinds, including the national security risk. And the distributed renewable future uh, can eliminate that risk of cascading blackouts. It's the only approach that can and can manage all the other risks best, uh, and yet cost no more than business as usual. We could end up with uh, what are called microgrids, that is, the, the grid is normally all interconnected, but it could break into little pieces fractally and reconnect seamlessly, and each of them could keep going without the rest of it. My own house works this way. I don't even know when the grid goes down because the house keeps working on its own solar power. This could uh, maximize our national security and innovation and customer choice and entrepreneurial opportunity. So it's a very attractive approach that uh, Denmark is installing on a pilot scale and it's, it's been used elsewhere with great success to produce resilience and it's where the Pentagon is headed because they need their stuff to work. So they're planning to get off the commercial grid and go to these netted islandable microgrids running largely or wholly on renewables. If, if you can come up with a solution that makes sense and makes money, uh, the profit motive is a very powerful driver and the, the transition off oil and coal happens to be five trillion bucks cheaper than business as usual, so with that much money on the table, the private sector is very powerfully motivated. The electricity industry is changing very rapidly towards efficient use and renewable supply. Uh, the renewables like solar and wind, other than big hydro, uh, last year got $225 billion of private investment. That's half as much as the total uh, money that the oil and gas industries spent to find their stuff. It's a big number. They added 84 billion watts. So those new renewables are now half again as big as the global capacity of nuclear power that took half a century to build and over a trillion bucks in subsidies. and. Uh, Half of the new generating capacity added in the world every year since 2008 has been renewable simply because uh, these technologies now are cheaper and have less financial risk than the big coal and nuclear plants, so they're getting the money instead. Uh, I find this very encouraging that, that markets actually respond rather nimbly when they realize that they can, uh, that the, the developers can make more money and less risk and provide better service at lower cost and improve everybody's security just by making different choices. I think the important thing is it doesn't matter whether you believe climate change is real and caused by human activity. If you care about uh, profits and jobs and competitive advantage or about national security 
or about climate protection and environmental stewardship and public health, any one or more of those outcomes uh, that, that you, you want is enough to make you support the, the transition to efficiency and renewables. You don't have to like all of them and you don't have to agree about which of them is most important because we're concentrating here on outcomes, not motives. And uh, we don't need to have the same ideology or the same belief about climate science in order to want to make money or improve national security, for example. And uh, that realization can turn gridlock and conflict into a unifying solution that, that satisfies everybody. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.